actually snowy. I just hate shoveling the back out. So I covered her up. By the uh, spend the money on the nice tractor supply button that already doesn't work. Tuesday morning, it's only about 10 30. Started uh, started snowing 6 or 7 a.m. Just kind of blowing around. Only got a couple inches on the ground so far, maybe two or three. But it's supposed to be a pretty big storm. might get, they said, up to 20 inches, but you know how that goes, you never really know. Make a few passes. Plow around. Not a lot of room to put snow around here.
spot here in front of the house where I park the trailers usually. Um, for the second time it snowed this year. It was like a real wet, heavy snow. And the little Raider, you know, it plows good, but it doesn't have a lot of weight to it, a lot of, a lot of power, you know, to uh, really smash the snow through. But, um, I mean, it does pretty good, but that was like, even the town plow guys were saying that it was like a, uh, like a cement snow that we got. So, I couldn't get it pushed back far enough because I got room you know, back to that telephone pole, and usually I'll push it all back there, and uh, that way, you know, when it snows the next time, I got more room for the snow, but I can only push that wet stuff so far, so it actually got caught up in the front, and uh, that has hindered my room to put snow, so now I'm like overflowing, and I had, I, uh, move my car trailer in a flat spot because I want that to be accessible. I, uh, I got, you know, a couple of people that might have wanted cars pulled out before the snow, but they never got a hold of me, so that didn't happen. But I was ready anyway. As you can see now, we got that stupid cap sitting there, but that's okay. That can sit there until springtime. I don't care. But stuff. And I don't want to break this thing because I don't like shovel. I'd rather be in here. I've got the heat on. property line, the guy next door. So, as far as I can push that. Uh, 
after I'm done, I usually uh, take a little ride around the neighborhood. Uh, see if anyone needs any help, make a pass or something. Ten bucks, twenty bucks, you never know. Someone might need something. videos you might have seen me working on this thing. It's got an old style Fisher plow on it and uh, had a hydraulic pump. And A, uh, a little winch from Harbor Freight. I mounted it on there. A little pulley system. So I can just pick it up and down. That's all I need. No, it works pretty good. Best thing I ever did was keep this little thing. It's nice and small. Get around. I got this for free. Did a whole clean out the yard, all kinds of scrap. Dodge Raider, carbureted four cylinder, 2.6 liter. It's only got 44,000 on the clock. Original miles. This was just the old guy's little plow rig for uh, his yard and driveway and stuff up here in Maine. Hadn't run in many years when I got it. And uh, after a lot of messing around, I got it going.
sold this thing a bunch of times. And, uh, I almost scrapped it a few times too. And, uh, boy, am I glad I didn't because <coughs> I've gotten to a point where I have everything working on it. The radio works, the heat works, the wipers. I mean, um, I got it so the alternator's charging, mm -hmm. and uh, other than that stupid starter button, and the fact that the starter clicks a few times before it goes, but usually, usually it goes, and I do have another one for the day that it definitely conks out, but I'll probably have to change that soon. cable gets a little bit twisted in the thing and it uh, comes out of adjustment a little bit mm -hmm. but never really hurts it. Thing, uh, locked in four wheel drive is like it's like a little tractor, I call it, with the tires. It's got some knobby tires and stuff, and uh, things like unstoppable.
last winter I was uh, using this and basically the hydraulic pump would uh, go up a little bit maybe like a half an inch off the ground sometimes it would work and you know it had the big uh, big joystick in here I should probably put the window up uh, it's snowy in here um, so I was basically just dragging the blade around the driveway and uh, it worked pretty good you know, it was better than shoveling. I mean, it was still, uh, what the hell, you know, might as well fire it up. But, um, so, and then last winter it was, the battery would always be dead. And I thought I had a shit one in there. And I changed it. And, uh, it would, it, it would start up like, uh, you know, it would sit there, and the thing would start, but then all of a sudden you'd be plowing, and it would just cock out, and then the battery would be dead, like it wouldn't start back up. And I almost positive I checked to see if it was charging, and I figured it was, but um, turns out it wasn't, and uh, so... <clears throat> before this winter I started messing around and I figured out that it wasn't charging so I ended up running my own wiring from the alternator to the battery and uh, after that we're uh, fully charging gauge even works and now you don't need my I had this switch right here that you would turn the key on and turn that that switch on that would turn the ignition on so that you would have spark you know it would power the coil well now well and of course you would hit the button because you turn the key and nothing nothing happens but when I first got it there was nothing it was like you, you turn the key and you couldn't get anything so anyway, a uh, lot, a lot, a lot of messing around. But um, after hooking up the alternator, now I don't need my coil switch. All I do is turn the key and hit the button like normal. So um, something in the wiring, you know, between the alternator and the ignition, somewhere in there you know, was tied in with that or something, and it needed to be live, so now that that's live, going to the battery, and we're charging, now it works, but still, I, uh, when you let it sit, then I had a drawdown, and, uh, the battery would go dead, so I put in a, a big master switch, I gotta turn the heat on, it's getting a little foggy in here, but um, I put one of those big, you know, ch chunk master switches right at the battery so that I could turn it off. But with the starter the way it was, sometimes you would uh, you would still go to start it, and it just wouldn't have enough. So then I had this old jump pack that was pretty much junk, but. If you charged it, like on a trickle, it still had juice. Well, I stripped it apart, threw the rest away, and I had just the battery sitting there for scrap. So I ended up taking that little battery out of the jump pack, shoved it right there on the dash, and uh, I have this charger that I got for free also. Um, the cord goes right out the window back here so that you can uh, just plug any extension cord in and that will uh, maintain the charge and I have this hooked this battery hooked to the other battery if you can follow along it's kind of wacky but uh, so it's always getting like a little trickle charge from you know the alternator but it provides extra voltage for starting and the starter seems to like it. Plus, I had my Harbor Freight uh, power inverter to run my 
Christmas lights for my wacky Christmas exhaust. And that's why that's hooked up, but that does not even do anything right now because I took those off. But. And that little cable that I attached in the beginning does my flashing roof light. Um, just didn't bother to put a switch in. But. I also had uh, wired up this power outlet because I had a smaller inverter at first that uh, plugged into that, but it didn't like the, the juice from the Christmas lights, so I had to get a bigger one. So if you can follow all that, here we are, and uh, that's where you were watching from, sitting right in the passenger side. The uh, various items in the back for weight. Uh, there's no rear frame rails in this thing. Leaf springs are just sitting up in there in the body. Um, that's the fuel tank. There is no... When I got it, there was no fuel... When the old guy was uh, using it, the fuel tank, uh, the factory one, fell right out. So it was so rotted in the back. And uh, for a while, I ran a little... I had like a little... Um, fuel tank off an old kerosene heater. It only held like a couple of gallons, but I just strapped it to the grill. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I ran, because the beauty of this is it has a mechanical fuel pump being, you know, an 87 with a carburetor, so you can just run a fuel hose right off the pump and pretty much do whatever you want. So then uh, a friend of mine gave me this... Uh, fuel tank and it looks like an air tank but it's actually a fuel tank and I don't know what it was for but it was clean and uh, I don't know how much it holds maybe um, maybe 10 12 gallons or something like that um, so got the uh, fuel line runs all the way up and then we just go right to a rock hole in the floor and uh, right onto the pump so mm -hmm. I well, hope you enjoyed that for now come all done mm -hmm. Gonna uh, let it pile up some more. 18 to 20 inches, they're saying, but hopefully they're wrong. Running out of room to put the snow. See you.